So just want to kind of uh, mention that in last week's training, we did touch upon um, Medi-Cal policy updates and its expansion and its impact on immigrant households. In today's training, we'll be discussing more about the medical process and its benefits as it applies to Alameda County. So several presenters have joined us today and we'll be sharing some of this information. Valerie Edwards, who will be um, facilitating this and uh, introducing the presenters, is a uh, licensed, social, licensed social worker and she works with a healthcare services agency. She's affiliated with a peer-to-peer -peer program in which she continues to develop and oversee. Uh, please join me in welcoming Valerie Edwards. Thank you for joining us today, Valerie. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. And um, thank you, everybody. If we could um, put the slides up. Um, some of you may um, know us from uh, the peer-to-peer -peer program. We started in the whole person care, Alameda County Care Connect. And um, Care Connect ended, it, Care Connect was a uh, whole person care was a precursor to the Cal AIM. Much of what we're talking about today um, comes from the Cal AIM initiative. Um, but the peer to peer program has continued on. Uh, next slide, please. And this is one of the pictures of our team. And I, um, today in our presentation, You'll be hearing um, not only from me, but um, from uh, Mike Webb, uh, Chiquela Legron, Lola Allen, and um, Rinaldi Gilder, where we'll be um, um, providing uh, information for you. I'm gonna turn it over to Mike to say a little more about who peer-to-peers are. Wow, great, thank you so much. It's, I'm uh, humbled to be um, representing the team. Oh my God, an introduction. So I just want the team, could you please just turn the cameras on? I want everybody to know who we are because we are a great team. You know, and I like to read this. We are a personal experience in our community health training. This training that we in to help other community members secure the resources they need. That just sums it up in a nutshell of, of who we are. So can just everybody say hello and a brief greetings, just say hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, happy Good Thursday. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning everyone. Have a good Wow, was that everyone? Hey, I I, I believe it is for the, the folks that are on right now. Thank you so, so much, Mike. Turn it over to Valerie. All right, Valerie, let's do it. Okay, next slide, please. So one of the things when we um, have typically done um, public uh, benefits that we talk about uh, Medi-Cal in the context of all the other types of benefits. So just putting a shout out that there's a lot of benefits and that we look from the perspective, a more culturally affirmative perspective, not just an individual, but who that individual cares about and who cares about them, typically who is in their household. And the benefits can differ depending on, um, uh, still in, in, though there's been many changes in immigration status, um, and who you are, if you're a worker uh, in terms of employment insurance, for example, and it impacts the whole family. So though we're talking about Medi-Cal uh, and Medicare only today, I just wanted to um, highlight that there are all these other benefits as well. Um, next slide, please. So we've had the introduction of our team we're going to talk about what Medi-Cal is and what's new to Medi-Cal, as well as doing a 211 um, overview. And we want to spend most of the time with discussion and questions uh, that you may have. I cannot, um, I may not be seeing the questions as they come up in the um, chat. If my team can help with calling out any kinds of questions that come up about the things that uh, talking about at that moment, I would really appreciate it. Next slide, please. So we wanna increase your understanding, uh, learn about the eligibility criteria, especially 
all the new changes that there's been in eligibility um, and the application process. And I think through discussion, there may be some issues and things that come up and um, in particular that you've experienced and for us to talk together about how to uh, resolve them. Um, next slide. So this is just a little reminder of what Medi-Cal is, that it, you know, it comes from federal government, they send it to the states, the different states manage it differently. Um, it's known federally as Medi Medicaid. And one of the ways that California handles it differently is that, that we put Cal to everything. So it's known as Medi-Cal. Um, and it really is the states that have the most control um, but historically, uh, uh, the state has sent it to the county, and most of us, if we um, are enrolled in Medi-Cal or work with Medi-Cal, we think in terms of the county to a great degree. One of the big changes is that the state is more outwardly facing. People are more aware of the state's role um, as they apply for Medi-Cal, um, particularly because the state has rolled out this new um, website. Um, so it's free or low cost for children and adults It's uh, with limited income and resources. And basically, uh, pregnancy into being newborn, it's, it's free for any, any um, person who's about a, the personhood of someone that, um, that uh, is in utero or newborn. Um, there still are multiple uh, entries to um, uh, Medi-Cal, they still want it to be no wrong door, uh, but that the local social services office um, is not as much of a center. It still is a place to enroll for Medi-Cal, but it's not uh, as focused on that. Um, one of the biggest changes, uh, California provides more healthcare and more healthcare services than um, most other states. There are a few others that are similar, but um, California is definitely a leader in that, um, in a belief of, you know, that term co covered California for low in, uh, income um, medical insurance. It's the idea that every Californian has a right to medical care and using state funds where federal funds don't exist to make that possible. So particularly, which we'll speak of a little more in a minute, 20, since 2016, um, California has made some real inroads in that. And so, um, uh, so an, an immigrant who, who meets all the eligibility requirements, um, can uh, qualify for a full scope Medi-Cal uh, if they um, have a, a recognized immigration status. Some people do not have a recognized in, uh, immigration status. They still are entitled to emergency and pregnancy related services. Like I said, any, any pregnancy is covered by, uh, qualifies for Medi-Cal. Um, and when needed could be um, eligible for state-funded long-term care. Um, state-funded is not what we're talking about today. We're talking about Medi-Cal. State-funded is one of the ones listed on the previous slide, but it's important for you to keep that in mind um, for folks that are undocumented. Um, that the retroactive of Medi-Cal can be requested um, th for uh, three months prior to the month of application. So if there is a problem that developed, there was some care sought, but the Medi-Cal wasn't applied for, um, retroactive Medi-Cal is possible as well. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned that um, a full scope Medi-Cal expansion, it's one of the two reasons why there's been significant changes. Um, those changes and how to ramp up how many people are on Medi-Cal because of the expansion has led to um, more ways 
different ways to apply for Medi-Cal, which we'll talk about in a minute. The other is that there was a pause in disqualifying people for Medi-Cal th during COVID. Three-year pause. Uh, it started up again that people needed to re-enroll, reassess. And so there's a massive number of people that need that reassessment. Those two things have made a, um, a big difference. And these things have happened rapidly. That um, it was just 2016 that all children under 19, whether they were a citizen or not, was eligible for Medi-Cal in California. And now, as recently as um, January 2024, that adults 26 through 49 qualify for full scope Medi-Cal. Now, I have been um, mathematically insecure lately for a variety of different reasons. Um, so I just want to check with people that what this means when you look at this list of how it changed in 2020 of under 26, which meant you know, all transitional age youth as well as minors. And then in 2022, 50 and over, and now 26 through 49, that's all of us now, right? Um, I think that's all of us uh, that are covered. Uh, uh, as long as uh, you live in California and you have a recognized immigration status or everyone in California, uh, who, if there's an emergency need for Medi-Cal. So we're all covered in that way. In addition, changed in January, 2024, is assets are no longer counted in determining Medi-Cal eligibility. And so assets are bank accounts, cash, vehicles, real estate, and other financial resources. Often people in the past had um, a car that, bumped them up so that they couldn't get um, get, couldn't get Medi-Cal. So you can have many people on your caseload that um, think they don't qualify and you want to be able to um, you want to be you want to make sure you you check. And then lastly, when it comes to homeland secure uh, yeah that's what they call themselves homeland security that um, Medi-Cal Qualifying for Medi-Cal, having Medi-Cal does not negatively impact that public charge determination they're assessing for as to whether or not they'll let you continue to um, uh, or consider you legitimate in terms of living in the, in, in the country, in the state. Um, Hi, Valerie, this is Adria. There's some questions developing in the chat. Okay, and I saw one for share of costs, which I'll cover in a minute. What Can you tell me what the other questions are? Sure. I'm gonna scroll up. Uh, all right. The first one I see is, do you know if undocumented immigrants are eligible for CalFresh? Uh, maybe here under asylum, but not sure. Well, definitely, if under uh, if they're an asylee, they do qualify. Um, what is the rest of the team? I I didn't, you know, we double checked this information before presenting, and and because we weren't talking about CalFresh, I didn't. Does anyone know? And Jaquela is working the chat, so thank you, yes, Jaquela. Ms. Valerie, she of understand. course, yes, I'm I'm double checking my notes and everything, making sure I'm not giving out the incorrect information, but I'm trying to respond to the chat as fast as I can. Okay. Then in that case, you know, please continue to put your question in chat and we will have discussion uh, if I do not um, answer uh, uh, in this presentation, then we can have it. Uh, we'll go over those questions in discussion. Thank you all. Um, so um, one of the things in terms of the, uh, uh, wanted to also mention that there is full scope, I forget the exact phrase for it, but it's basically partial Medi-Cal. And full scope means um, everything. Um, and there is, you'll see um, a link to a list of what services are covered under Medi-Cal which is comprehensive. It's a um, the partial is um, 
at certain times, particularly pregnancy or emergency. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. So these are the um, uh, eligibility um, details in terms of income, um, household size, that has not changed in the last year. Uh, the resident residency status certainly has, which um, I just described. Um, and that there is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, um, uh, I'm gonna have to change that. I'm sorry, I missed that on our slides, that there, uh, uh, that there are income limits, but want to emphasize that the assets, which is different than income, uh, is uh, is different and as of January 1st. Um, and so we will change that slide before go um, sending it out. I apologize. Uh, next slide. So the difference between covered California versus Medi-Cal. So uh, Medi-Cal is low cost free coverage with people with limited um, limited income um, that uh, uh, what is on the previous slide in terms of how they describe the income limit. Um, but some people are over that income limit but can't afford medical insurance because it's expensive for all of us. So this is where uh, Cover California, where they can shop for private health plans and um, and access financial assistance if they qualify for that um, so that they can get those plans at a discount. If you are um, if you qualify for Medi-Cal, what you need to if they require you to have Medi-Cal, uh, you can't go to Cover California and get um, and get that instead of Medi-Cal. You may be able to get something more in Cover California, um, but you won't qualify for the discount for that. If you go to uh, Cover California and you put the information in, they'll let you know that you qualify for Medi-Cal, kind of move you um, over to that. Um, and on this slide is where you could see what the um, minimal essential coverage is, what all the plans have to cover. Um, for um, Medi-Cal or Cover California. Uh, and that's important because people can go to private plans in order to, um, with their Medi-Cal. And so they can check to make sure that they're getting um, what, what they paid for who um, as a resident of the state. Uh, next slide, please. So this question around share of costs. Somehow, something about my early life, even though my family wasn't on Medi-Cal, there's something love about share costs, which is, you know, the people with chronic illness, um, you know, particular expensive um, pharmacy, if they did not have these um, burdens of illness, would not qualify for Medi-Cal at all and wouldn't particularly miss it. But because their insulin costs a couple thousand dollars, hopefully that's changing, um, it may bump them into um, qualifying for Medi-Cal. And that is what share of cost um, is about, is that you have Medi-Cal, but you may have some payment that you have to make because you, um, if it weren't for your medical condition, you would not um, qualify for share costs. One of the things that we need to pay attention to as providers is that um, share cost is only month to month. So if someone has needs, like maybe they need a lab test for their medication um, once a quarter, um, maybe they can get a 90 day instead of 30 day prescription you want to make sure the lab test, the prescription, the annual exam, as many things are all in one month as possible so that that limits how much money they um, 
have to uh, spend and share a cost. It can be managed really well in that way. Um, next slide, please. So this is just to give you um, a picture of what the cards look like. Sometimes people, they can, t they can describe the card. It has poppies on them. Oh, um, then that you're referring to your benefits identification card. Um, now that we can do so much online, we're not as dependent on looking at what the pictures are, but it's good to, or to be able to describe the picture. Um, but it's good to keep in mind what they look like. Um, next slide, please. So what has really changed uh, big time, and after I describe this slide, uh, Jacoyla is going to uh, speak more on it, uh, is that there's now a Benefits Cal website. Many of you are acquainted with other websites. There have been websites before 2020, um, but uh, some of them have gone away now. And they are, did not um, place as much emphasis on them as they have now. So this one opened in 2020, but in the fall of 2023, just this last fall, they um, kind of launched it as what they hope to be the main place that people are um, applying for food, medical, and cash benefits. That it's all on one site. They have 20 languages. Um, which isn't all the languages that are needed. We need about 25 more. Um, but they have 20 languages in which they describe uh, the application process. You're able to check your status. You can upload your documents. They've also, um, uh, because of this, what they call the cliff of all the people that are going to um, drop off of Medi-Cal if they're not found, and re-enrolled. Um, the uh, if they if they're not able to do that, they're going to be they're going to be disenrolled, um, which is really a problem for providers, not as much for for um, residents, but it is a problem. And then also we want to spread the good news of the expansion that they have employed. Um, um, they've made contracts with community-based organizations to um, submit the applications, to help people by helping them submit the application, their application, to be able to track the applications themselves. Even the managers in the community-based organization, if I, if I submit an application um, for Arlene, um, there's something that's holding it up. I'm not noticing that. My manager might notice that, um, checking on what what the applications look like, what's needed, um, prompting their staff to go out and and make a make um, to help the participant with that. So uh, it can also be it has a chat function, text function, updates. When the CBOs are doing it then it means the CBOs could get those texts as well as um, the residents. So they've put a lot of energy into using, um, uh, creating this website, wanting to make sure people use it. They've made changes in at least our local office in terms of what's possible, though everything you've done before is still possible in the local office. And I will describe that. Um, they're trying as much as possible to have people use the benefits. Cal website. They have many, this is the web page and they have many um, videos for this. I'm gonna turn it over to Chiquela, who will say a little more and uh, Leah's gonna be putting up the video so you can see what it looks like. Thank you, Ms. Valerie. <clears throat> so, um... I was able to navigate the new benefits Cal portal. Um, I found it very easy to navigate and um, very helpful. Um, but I'm I'm also 
you know, computer savvy or, you know, I prefer using technology for majority of the things that I do. So it was very helpful for me. Um, I do appreciate that um, navigating through the website, I learned that they have how-to videos because my first and main concern were for um, our seniors or people who are unable to navigate the uh, internet like, you know, other people. So um, I did create an account so I can get the full experience of what benefits Cal has to offer. Um, and there's a wide variety of things that you can do on there. You can upload documents, apply for benefits, uh, request in-person appointments, add or remove uh, family members. And also um, for our CalWORKs families, you can request reimbursements for things like if you started a new job and had to um, pay for your uniform or certification, you can get reimbursement for that. Um, if you started school and had to pay purchase school supplies or books, you can get reimbursed for that. And you can submit all these requests through this website. So I found that bit to be very interesting. Um, they do offer it in 20 languages, 20 different languages. Um, um, what else? Do you mind going back up to the top of the, the website, please? Thank you. So here's all the languages that they offer. Um, and I think you can go down a little bit more. Okay. And then yeah, also, if, if you click on the program section, these are all the pro programs that they offer. Um, I did also learn by um, when exploring the website that if you are experiencing EBT fraud or your card being lost or stolen, there is um, there's no way to request like for the card to be closed or request a new card. You have to call the number, but they do provide the number on there as well. Um, uh, for emergency benefits, I learned that the response time is three days um, as it would be in the office. So that was good because that was another one of my concerns. Um, thank you. Can you go to the home page, home page please? And this is not the dashboard, but when you are have your account created and set up and everything, you can go to your dashboard and it will show you everything about your account, your case number, your benefit amount, um, who's on your case, what needed doc, if you have any documents that need to be turned into your caseworker, they'll be either in red or bold print at the top of your dashboard. Um, so I felt this to be very helpful. And then um, if you would like to, Leah, can you please play the uh, video on the customer dashboard? Yes, thank you. So this will give you a better understanding of what I got to learn about um, our new website or portal. Welcome to Benefits Cal, an easy way to apply for and renew food, medical, and cash assistance benefits. This video will show users an overview of the customer dashboard. The customer dashboard is the first screen that displays after signing into a benefitscal.com account. The customer dashboard displays all the important information about your account in one place. Let's explore the dashboard. The things to do section displays items that are due soon like the reports and renewals that you can complete online. Under the What else would you like to do section, common actions are listed for easy reference. This includes links to upload documents, report a change, request appointments, and submit requests to your caseworkers. Under the Your Applications and Cases section, Benefits Cal will display the status of an open application and the status of all your cases. Click View Case Details to access more case information. 
The case details screen lists the programs included on your case, such as CalFresh, CalWorks, Medi-Cal, and others. Click on View Program Details to see more information. This screen displays important information, including the benefit amount, the name of the program members, and the contact information of a caseworker who can answer your questions. Now, let's see how you can view your messages. Starting at the Customer Dashboard, click Messages from the menu at the top to view the Message Center. The Message Center has two tabs. Under the Messages tab, you'll find messages from your caseworker. Under the Notices tab, you'll find important documents from your caseworker. Now, let's see how you can view your appointments. Starting at the Customer Dashboard, you can view upcoming appointments under the Your Next Appointment section. To request an appointment, go to the What Else Would You Like to Do section and click on I Want to See My Appointments. On this screen, you'll see appointments that are scheduled in the upcoming section. To request an appointment, click on the Request an Appointment button at the bottom of the screen. Click View Request History to see past appointment requests. This includes the type, case number for the account, and the requested appointment date. Now, let's see how you can view the history of what you submitted in BenefitsCal. Starting at the Customer Dashboard, go to the What Else Would You Like to Do section and click on I Want to See My History. The History screen shows a list of applications, renewals, periodic reports, and change reports submitted via your BenefitsCal account. Let's explore the menu at the top of the screen. Select this drop-down to change the language of the website. BenefitsCal is available in 20 languages. The bell icon in the top right corner displays an account notification. A number icon will display in red when you have a notification to view. Finally, the circle in the top right provides access to your account details. Click on the circle to open the menu, then click on Manage Your Account. The Account Settings screen shows information about the account. You can update your password, security questions, and communication preferences. Let's review some help resources available to users on BenefitsCal. In the top menu, hover over Help to display the drop-down menu, then select Forms. The Forms screen displays a list of forms that may be requested by your caseworker. The search bar at the top of the screen makes it easy to find a form. Now, let's go over how to find an office. In the top menu, hover over Help to display the drop-down menu, then select Find an Office. Select a county, enter a zip code, and click one or more of the programs. BenefitsCal will show a list of nearby county offices that can help. Finally, in the top menu, hover over Help to display the drop-down menu, then click on FAQs. The FAQ screen includes many topics. Select any topic or use the search bar to search the list of frequently asked questions. Thanks for watching. For more videos and help resources, visit benefitscal.com slash help or visit the YouTube channel at Thank, Thank you. you, Leah. And then one more thing, um, we do also have a link that we can provide in the chat um, if you guys would like. It uh, shows the list of the how-to videos on the um, Benefits Cal website. And it is very helpful because they, um, they have a video um, for community-based organizations, again, for the recipients and just how to navigate the website. Okay, thank you, Jaquela. If we can go back to the PowerPoint and go to the next slide. So um, locally, a lot of that information that was on the video is on a different website um, that's, that's there, healthyac.org. And that has um, CalAIM and, uh, oh shoot, something came up 
wants to know if I speak Spanish. Um, sorry. Um, it it in, includes Cal AIM and uh, I, excuse me. I'm sorry. It includes Cal Fresh as well as Medi-Cal, um, so that you can apply for both. But it also tells you what the community based which community based um, organization that can help you apply. It, um, that's closest to your zip code. So it's just a more local friendly description of um, the services that are here in Alameda County. And it replaces what Alameda Social Services may have um, put up before. I could still see the, some of the ones they put up before. I advise you to go to this one. It will show you where the Medi-Cal navigators that have been recently funded are bringing everything up to date. What's on the right side are um, services that you may be familiar with that no longer exist. No reason for me to describe them. I just listed them there if any of them are ones that you have used in the past. It's another example of how they're changing. Um, there, I um, saw in the chat the question around um, undocumented in health insurance. And uh, it is confusing because I have seen things on the web that I would think were reliable that said that undocumented um, are covered by Medi-Cal. Technically, that's true for emergency Medi-Cal and pregnancy. But... Uh, uh, but what they're referring to in terms of satisfy, satisfactory Im immigration status uh, does not include um, undocumented. So there's a link I will send um, to Leah that she could send out um, from DHCS about status, and they, um, they speak to that. You may qualify for Medi-Cal coverage for emergency pregnancy related services if you meet all the eligibility requirements, but do not have satisfactory immigration status. Immigration status, immigrants who have satisfactory immigration status and meet all eligibility requirements can qualify for full Medi-Cal coverage. So um, I think that's a lot of political rhetoric that makes it hard for us to understand that the answer is no. Um, on that point. Um, next slide, please. So this is a summary of the ways that you can apply. You can apply online um, in these links that we've described before. You could still apply on by phone. Uh, I don't know what that looks like. Um, I, I, I would ex I would expect that it would be that you're waiting on the phone a long time for someone to answer. So I really urge you to, to be able to help people online. There is also by mail. Um, they will also send you an application if you ask for that. And that that application could be one of those um, fill in PDFs to make it easier. You can still go to the office, social services, um, and they still have the regular service hours, um, but that, uh, that 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 I think you should expect to be challenging. Next slide, please. I'm gonna go quickly just in terms of Medi-Cal, Medicare are different. We were, um, the uh, Medicare has different parts to it. Everyone who's over 65, uh, qualifies um, for Medicare, uh, given that you, you know, fit the, the status as they've described it. Next slide, please. Uh, and that if you have not um, been paying into Medi-Cal, Medicare for the minimum no number of months, that you have a higher cost that you need to pay for um, for Part A, and that's described there, and then um, more information at that link that's described before below. Next slide, please. Picture of the Medi-Cal slides. A next slide. 
Um, so Medicare is actually um, kind of a, like a, a limit. It's an it's an uh, supplemental uh, insurance. It's not full insurance. Um, and many people have private insurance that supplements the Medicare. Some have um, Medi-Cal that supplements the Medicare. And that's what they're referring to in terms of Medi-Medi. Next uh, slide, please. Now we're going to just, um, I'm sorry, if our, um, we still have the plan to, to have some time for discussion. But um, first, Lola and Rinaldi are going to describe 211, um, which is a place for you to find other resources. Lola? Great. Thank you, Valerie. I will move quickly. Good morning again, everyone. Let's talk about 211. Most people have had encounters with 211, but if you haven't, 211 is a free resource 24 7 you can call 211 for resources for physical and mental housing next slide please. i'm sorry i got that spanish thing that popped up for me as well uh, okay we'll go slide. with the we can go with the slides uh, to talk about 211 we have the slides here you can see the vision of 211. They've been around since 1976. They've been able to be a bridge. They've been able to be a bridge for individuals, connecting them to resources. And part of their vision is to be a community empowered with information. Next slide. Again, what is 211? Here, to, you can see the 211 has a variety of resources, one being their housing, where they connect people. If you go to the website, you can see the healthy choice or healthy housing. I'm sorry, got the medical in my head. You can see the healthy housing, the choices for housing, where you can determine uh, what it is that you're looking for, uh, spaces and, and places. Uh, that's one of the benefits. The AIDS, permanent housing for AIDS. Uh, again, that's a feature that I really appreciate that they address the housing needs for AIDS. And of course, disaster responses. Most people think of calling 911 when they have a disaster. 211 is a place that you would want to call to get uh, disaster information should a disaster happen before, during, and after, uh, 211 would definitely be a resource that you can call. Uh, 211 also provides transportation. There's a transportation element to 211. And I know, Rinaldi, are you here to add uh, comments to uh, resources and support that 211 provides? Uh, you're doing a great job, Lola. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, again, uh, the main resources for 211, uh, as you can see, is the physical and mental health resources, as well as food employment. And that kind of sums it up. Uh, and, again, yeah. again, 211 is a resource that you definitely want to uh, reach out to first for uh resources and community needs. Thank you so much, Lola. I appreciate that. Um, we have one more slide. I just want to check that to see if there's anything with our time crunch. So it's okay if you've already, I think you've covered everything that's on that slide, right, Lola? I think so. So if we can go to questions. Yes. Um, thank you so much. I guess we can, we can, uh, yeah, take those slides down. So, um, uh, Ch Chiquela and Adria, I know, have been checking the, the questions. Which questions do or I want to, um, mm -hmm. I want to, um, respond to, uh, Robin. I just seen her question or their question. I'm sorry. Um, 
Could you speak about the newborn refer referral form for adding new babies to Medi-Cal? <clears throat> so, uh, yes, go ahead. Okay. So with that, to add, um, so you have the temporary Medi-Cal um, that, that covers your prenatal care during your pregnancy. That, pre that prenatal care lasts up, um, it can last up to 90 days after the birth of the child. After that, you can take the, um, it's a, the, the yellow copy of a, your birth certificate form from the hospital or the birth certificate if you have it already. And those will be the two requirements needed to add in the newborn to the case, if that answers your question. Thank you, Chapela. Um, what other questions? People can just shout out the question. They have or something. I see a question from Martha about the transportation available via 211 through Alameda Alliance Health Insurance, or is it something different? Lola? Yes. Um, 211 uses uh, a variety of different outlets for their transportation. They have, um, they have, they partner with Lyft. They also uh, uh, partner with another organization called Ride United. So I would call 211 because that can change, and they partner with a variety of different other uh, entities to coordinate rides uh, with people. But definitely for medical appointments, um, employment, and those type of things, you can get assistance from 211. Okay. And Sarah, ju just put a question in chat about inactive. Do you want to speak to it, Sarah? No, I just, I work with adoption assistance program and we'll get calls fairly, just adopted parents saying, hey, my kid's Medi-Cal showing inactive. Um, and all, and, and, our, elig and our, inf our eligibility info says the AAP is active. So I don't, I don't mm. know why. Um, does anyone know the answer to that? Why well, I know that the, um, there's sometimes a, a misalignment between the provider and the state about the timing, you know, where it it's one has it expires in March, another one says July. Um, I know that that is the case that sometimes, and you may notice that certain organizations they work with, it happens more often than others. They're having an alignment, um, bad bureaucracy kind of thing. Does anyone have any other um, experiences? Um, oh, yeah, that, yeah, you mentioned something about renewal. So, does Medi Cal when how often does it need to be renewed? It needs to be if during COVID they stopped it, but then it, it started up again and it's annual. And that is one of the other reasons it's especially since it's so easy to check when you ask your um, participant, Do you have Medi Cal? and they say yes they um, aren't necessarily recognizing that it needed to be renewed. They've moved in the three years. They never got the packet. So it's important to always chat. Well, does the state agree that you have Medicaid? That that should be just like social work hygiene to do that every time. Um, I was, this is Nina, hi. I was going to say the other time you see the inactive is, and issues come up when there's transfers between different counties from Alameda to another county or from Contra Costa to Alameda that um, I've seen happen. And sometimes you have to call back with the worker and check in what's going on at both ends. Great. Thank you for adding that. Um, could someone read out the question? So whether or not we're up to date these new questions. Now that, it, it, why don't you just, if you can turn on the mic for Karina. 
there are a couple of people who are asking for some follow up around your comments. Um, I'm trying to go back up and chat. Uh, there were for families that are unable to access benefits, Cal, what is the process to add their baby to their Medi-Cal case, as well as can I get a get bit more clarity regarding newborns? How long are they covered under mother's Medi-Cal after birth? Jaquela, do you know what the how long it is? I think it's, is it 90 days? So yes, and the newborn is covered under the prenatal Medi-Cal for 90 days. Yeah, and, and, then, and, then, and that, yeah, the the paperwork that the mother receives um on discharge is what she will need to add the baby to the case, and if it takes more time than ninety days, then they can request an extension from their worker. And these uh, the community based organizations should be able to help you with, with that, um, uh, that if with everything that has to do with not being able to use a computer or access that. Um, when it comes to initiating a transfer from county to county, um, uh, what is the most recent process with that? I believe that you can do that through the website as well um, and assistance with your navigator. Does anyone see it? Have any other ways in which that's done? The transfer from county to county usually it had been if you did it before the tenth, it it worked for the you know because of the retroactive aspect of Medi-Cal that it would work for the month before. Yes, Ms. Valerie, and I wanted to add to that. Um, for my family specifically, it took us a total of sixty days, but the first thirty days, the new county we were just covered under their county Medi-Cal. Um, and, and that allowed me time to look into different um, providers and networks and stuff like that and see which plan I wanted to put my family under. Okay. And um, the income threshold that we need to double check it, but it's um, in the slides of the, uh, uh, the it, it's when you're over the threshold for, um, Qualifying for Medi-Cal is when the share of costs would kick in. And um, so if you have medical needs that brings you below that 138% um, of the uh, federal poverty level, you have, in, you have in, uh, medical bills that bring you below that, that's when the, the share of costs kicks in. Um, any other, I know we're at 1057. There's a couple more questions. Would you like me to read another one? Yes. A senior household has a house and some savings in the bank. If they use the benefit of Medi-Cal, will their children need to pay back the money after their parents pass away? Oh, wow. That would be cold, wouldn't it? Um, I, I saw nothing that indicated that to be the case. Could someone please mention some examples when Medi-Cal is not free? It says in the parentheses low cost. And so I don't know if that means when Medi-Cal would be low cost. Okay. Um, well, it's when... Um, So you're say you're a college student and you're on Medi-Cal and then you graduate and you get a job that um, so now you're above the poverty level. Maybe you can't. So you no longer uh, qualify for Medi-Cal, but you don't have enough money to actually buy private insurance. You may qualify for covered California. Um, if you're pregnant and you don't have health insurance, um, you're gonna qualify for Medi-Cal and through 90 days past birth, uh, your uh, offspring 
your infant will also qualify for Medi-Cal, but may not qualify after that. And maybe you're helping them get it covered California. Those are a couple of examples. Um, you're disabled. You've been disabled for a long time. Um, you may be on Medi-Cal, even Medicare, because SSI, after a number of years, you may be on Medicare. But um, things change in, in advances in medicine, particularly advances in accommodation in the workplace. You now can go back to work, work for some time. That might move you um, too high for Medi-Cal move you to cover California or private insurance. Those are some examples. Any other questions? I see one question says, what happens to the newborn referral form when it gets faxed into county social services? Mm. Well, Shaquayla, do you have an answer for that? My my first thought is that you don't want to do any faxing anymore if you can help it. And that's why it was important to me for you to actually see the video about how easy it is to do Cal benefits. I, um, I didn't hear the question, Ms. Valerie. I'm, I'm in the chat still. <laughs> oh, it's like, what happens? What happens to the newborn referral form when it gets faxed um, into social you know services? What? In my experience, I've never had a good experience with faxing forms. Um, I had I had a better experience physically taking them in and scanning them at the kiosk or giving them to the um, receptionist and having them scan them into the system and receiving a receipt. Yeah. Because it, um, to my understanding, I'm sorry, Ms. Valley, but I want to okay. add really quick. To my understanding, the, um, the, their, their fax is, is like... It's one location for an entire office and over a hundred workers. And so just imagine how many people are getting, you know, forms faxed over. The forms can get lost, dropped up under the machine or whatever. So if I, if I've always heard of people not receiving them, you know, stuff like that. So it's just better if you are able to go into the office and scan them yourself. There is a, a worker or an intern that stand next to the kiosk that will be there to support if needed. But if not, you can go to the receptionist and give it to them. That's the safest option outside of um, uploading it on the, the portal. Chicoila is great with um, giving um, giving uh, this kind of all the information she's given this morning um, about why. And so I just wanted to say at this point, thank you very much, uh, Chicoila and uh, Lola. Um, for uh, for your contributions to this because it's very valuable. Um, and I also want to say I agree. Don't don't do any more faxing. Hey, I see Shirley's hand is raised. Shirley, do you want to sure. unmute yourself? I just wanted, I just wanted to add to Jaquela when they go into the office and use the kiosk, you will definitely get a receipt. That's important that you got it in on time. And uh, so you'll get a receipt so opposed to fax it, you won't, that won't happen. So that's a good idea to, to, keep, to go to the kiosk and you'll get a receipt once you do scan all your documents. So just wanted to add that to that, that important point. That way, you know, they'll know that you did it. And you can scan, you right, in, and you can scan right into the website. So, um, and, and track what you've uploaded. Yes. So want yes. to add that too. Absolutely. So I want to acknowledge that we are at time. Um, I don't know if you guys want to, if uh, Valerie and your group want to stick around for a few more minutes to answer a few sure. more questions. Um, or if, another option would be if you can't stay because you have, you know, you have to leave. Uh, people could email me the questions and then I can try to um, get some answers for everyone and send it out in a big frequently asked questions document or something like that. Oh, maybe that sounds, yeah, that sounds good. Well, why, why don't we do that? Okay.
Okay, great. So um, if you haven't had a chance to get your question answered, or if you haven't put your answer, your question into the chat, um, you are welcome to email me your question and or questions. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll forward them on to our presenters, and then I will gather it into a large document for everyone um, and set, share it out after the event. Um, is there anybody who has any last minute things they want to say before we um, wrap up for today? Yes, I just wanted to answer one more question that was um, very important regarding the newborn's uh, birth certificate. Um, when adding them to the new case, um, they do ask for the, the, the birth certificate. However, if you have not had a chance to get it, the, um, again, the form that you receive when being discharged, it does have the um, official stamp on it and they will accept that form and then they'll give you, allow you time to bring in the original birth certificate. Awesome, great job, Jaquela, you awesome. <laughs> yes, thank you. Awesome, well, I would like to thank everyone who came and joined us today. Um, and all of our presenters, so much, so much deep knowledge and so much information. We really appreciate you. Um, and again, if you have more questions or didn't get your question answered, we'll follow up with a, a frequently asked questions um, document after the training ends. Um, thanks everyone so much. Uh, the trainers and I are gonna hang on for just a few minutes to do a little debrief. So we are inviting you at this point to click your little red leave button at the bottom of your screen. And we um, hope that you have a wonderful day and weekend soon. Take care all. Thank you to the presenters. You all were very inf informational. It was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Quayla, you helpful. need a raise. Thank you, Ms. Edgers and Kim Yeah, yeah. And Thank everybody you. on the team. Take care, care, everyone. Thank you. Good job, everyone. <laughs>